Gotcha. Okay, let's still react to this. This is, um... Hoyaverse doesn't get it, or the original title was like, uh, Hoyaverse's Massive Problems and How to Fix Them, or whatever. Uh, the original title, anyway. And then Tectone since renamed it to Hoyaverse doesn't get it, so... Let's see what the bald man, what the egg man has to say about this. I promised you guys a video on how to fix the issues in the Hoyaverse community right now, for the long term. I don't like saying that things are a problem when I don't present a solution. It's a reason why I really despise when creators say things like, Oh, you know, I like Tectone, but the way he communicates is wrong. And then don't tell me the proper way to communicate. If you're not going to present True, a actually. solution to the <laughs> issue that you're bringing up, what's the point of talking about it? If there's no, if there's no solution, mm. then you're just... Actually, uh... I'm half and half on that. I can't, I know, I understand where Tectone's coming from when he says, like, if you can't, if you can't come up with a solution, like, don't, just don't talk at all. Uh, I, I, I go both ways on that because I obviously am of the same opinion normally, right? Where if you don't, like, if you don't have any meaningful solution to pitch forward to a problem you think that you, or for something that you think that there's a problem, right? Then, yeah, I'm not going to, personally, yeah, I'm not going to try to, like, you know, waste everyone's time about, about, like, bitching about how oh there's there's a problem about this or there's a problem with that and you know yada 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 uh because that's exactly why i made my how to improve genshin video right not not only the one from for this year but also from last year because this is the second year that i've made the how to improve genshin impact video uh yeah for this year or for for two years in a row uh so i do agree with mr tectone on that with the bald man on that However, um, just saying that, oh, if you don't have a solution or if you can't come up with a solution or like a suggestion for how to fix a problem, don't talk about it at all. Um, and just just saying that and just leaving it at that is also kind of ignorant, too, because the reality is that a lot of people don't know how to fix a problem. Right. Um, like we might we might make fun of people for being incapable of coming up with a solution to a problem that they perceive but the reality is that you know a lot of people whether they recognize it or not some people may realize that oh yeah i don't know how to fix this i don't know how to fix this other people obviously just kind of yap their mouths off uh, without thinking but yeah a lot of people just don't know how to solve a problem um but just because they don't know doesn't mean that they shouldn't talk about it right they're still doing. They're still, in my in my honest opinion, in a in a vacuum, right? With taking out all like the ulterior motives or like any of the any like human emotion, right? Uh, attributed to like talking about a problem, it's still a net positive for you to speak out about there being a problem if you think there is one, right? Because at least that way that 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 increases the awareness that people or a community have about this problem that you think that there is um and obviously in mihoyo's case obviously they got a few problems going on uh that we would like them to address um and so ha getting more people to be more aware of it and trying to convince them that yeah this problem is a serious thing that we should probably consider um even if people don't have a solution that they can push pitch for themselves um that doesn't mean they shouldn't talk about it because as long as they understand that they don't they don't know how to fix it themselves right I, ideally that's what they should say instead of just like complaining about something and not afford, not like suggesting anything at all right obviously the most constructive form of you know complaining if you want to call it that the more po the more proper the more polite term would be like constructive feedback or whatever right ideally people should voice their concerns and concerns in a way where obviously it's you know trying to be polite it's trying to be you know respectful about it, about that uh, about that right because obviously most a lot of people in it don't know how to do that um but as long as you understand that as long as you understand that um hey i don't know how to fix this problem myself uh but i still want to talk about it anyway because i feel very strongly about it and you can voice your opinion in a way that's respectful and it's not like putting down anybody well except for mihoyo mihoyo can go fuck themselves but um yeah as long as you can uh, you can tr at least try to convey your opinions on a matter on a problem 
you know, properly, right? I don't think there's an issue about, uh, there should be an issue about people bringing up a problem, even if you don't know how to fix it yourself. Because um, by doing that, hopefully somebody will take notice and somebody who is capable of bringing up a solution or does have a solution in mind for this problem you brought up can join the conversation and be like, oh yeah, I agree, and here's how I would fix it. So I'm half and half on Eggy's uh, statement on that, where it's like, yeah, I get where he's coming from, um, especially with the people when he's talking about people who complain about him in particular. Yeah, I get that. Um, but at the same time, you know, you shouldn't like just shut down all conversation um, wholesale, right? Even if people don't really have that great of an opinion to to pitch forward, like I'm uh, like at its core, right? Uh, because uh, I am a true American, um, I do I do earnestly think that everybody's opinion does at least contribute something, um, no matter how uninformed you are, uh, because at the very least. Um, most of the time when people are talking about a problem, or most of the time, I would, I would hope so, uh, whenever people are talking about or discussing like issues, uh, at least they're earnest about it. Even if their opinions on the matter are maybe misinformed or whatever, at least they feel strongly about it. So they're so so. Even though I said you know try to remove remove the human emotion component uh, from like these sorts of arguments, um, at least from an emotional standpoint, uh. A lot of the time, at least they can be, you know, at least we know they're earnest. But, you know, even then, that's a little bit iffy. Because, you know, people might be might be trying to push different sorts of agendas whenever they talk about problems and whatnot. So, but that's getting, that's starting to become political. So, we're just talking about gotcha games. Anyways, that's just what I wanted to say there, just to start. Saying words, and it doesn't matter. So, I would like to put my money where my mouth is, and I want to break everything down very easily for you guys to understand and I'm going to become I'm going to channel my inner Matt Jestic and I'm going to become the notepad archon and I don't want to end the video until everybody <laughs> notepad thinks archon, amicably huh? that this is a proper solution let's get down to business so here's the problem to defeat the hunts how do we stop them Tectone how do we stop them how do we stop the leaks what do we do what do we do Tectone I'm freaking out let's talk how do we stop leaks now before before we get into leaks, we are going to talk about leaks that benefit the community, and we're going to talk about leaks that hurt the community, and all leaks right. that hurt the company, and leaks that hurt the story. So first of all, leaks. Across the board, company-wise, all leaks are bad. Surely we agree on that? Unless... It's giga hype, but no, even still that doesn't work because the, the company themselves could present it better to generate more hype. So for company-wise, all leaks are bad. Player-wise, <clears throat> leaks, character leaks, kits, good. Character leak kits, good. Will allow players to prepare and save resources. Company does mm -hmm. not want you to do that. Company does not want you to do that. It's going to make you play less. It's going to let you be more prepared. It's going to let you evaluate your resources. It's going to allow you to save money. And the company does not want you to do that. They're a gotcha company. Okay? They're a gotcha company. They are meant to take your money. If you disagree with that, look mm -hmm. up what yes, a gotcha sir. company is. It is selling gambling to children. It just is. You can never change my mind. That's how it is. And here's the thing. I love it. I love it. Now, let's continue. <laughs> this will allow p players to prepare Fucking and kids. save resources. Story leaks. Bad. Bad. Reading on a website, Acheron dies. Well, that ruins the <laughs> whole story. Reading your favorite character dies in a game and not experiencing not experiencing it will ruin player experience. Yeah. I would say that these zones are fine. New zone. Okay, new zone neutral people will only see the zone and not be able to walk around fully so the experience is still there to get but it might water down the excitement now sure. here's the thing with zone leaks the company themselves have shown it 
beforehand on their developer live stream. I don't know if I can speak for everyone here, but but when the company themselves shows me the zone, it kind of kills the excitement for me. It kind of does. It's still cool to go, but I do think it would just be cool to be able to walk around and have that be my first impression. But I am the one who is consenting to watch it. So I still get the initial hit of dopamine and I'm like, I can't wait to wiggle around myself, but it does kill the excitement a little bit, but these are neutral. I don't think zone leaks you need to worry about at all. Uh, one thing I'll add for the part about zone leaks is that, like, I get where Tectone is coming from with that, but, like, they need something to show for their dev live streams. So it's like, okay, so if they, if they plan to put out a new zone then, and they don't show it on stream, then, like, what else do they show, you know? Um... Like, obviously, you know, that would be up to Mihoyo to, like, try to fill in the gaps there as, as to, like, you know, what, what they can't, what they feel like they should show, um, instead, right, instead of the new, le instead of the new zones. Um, but I, I can see where, I can see where Tectone is coming from. Uh, yeah. Um, I think that the best way to kind of alleviate that, at least from Tectone's perspective, is to when when you come up when Mihoyo develops like a new zone for or, for like a map or something for one of the for one of the worlds or something in Star Rail, um, maybe they can put in like secret zones where like when you're walking around and ex just doing some exploration stuff or maybe when you do like some like side quests or something, uh, you are able to access like a completely different zone than what was shown on the live stream, so that way, uh that can preserve some of the like the hype and excitement of like oh my god like what what is this like what did i just go what did i just get myself into right uh like what what is this complete new area that i did that I, that I totally didn't expect sort of thing so i suppose that would be the best way uh to sort of alleviate tectones like um concerns there but obviously that would mean more you know development time that would be more effort on the devs part to like like give you like a sort of surprise for that sort of thing but yeah it's kind of kind of tough to uh to address but yeah i would say i'm more i'm more neutral on that uh because i'm of the opinion that like i'm the sort of dude who doesn't even mind spoilers right i mean tecton brought the example like oh my god like if, if people if the story is leaked and people find that akron dies in the story then yeah obviously yeah i understand how bad that would be on the players right the, how how demoralizing that would be for the players me personally i'm the type of per i'm the type of person where even if i get hard spoiled on like a major plot point of a story or a major plot twist um i'll st if i'm interested in a story which to be fair for star i'm not really that interested but i'll probably read panakini's story anyway um just because firefly died <laughs> or died in quotes because we all know she didn't really die right no way. Uh, yeah, even if I do get spoiled, I'm still going to read it anyway because just being told, oh yeah, this character dies, like, sure, okay, that's a spoiler, sure, but I want to see, like, the context. Because just, just saying that a character dies and have giving you no context whatsoever, like, for me, it doesn't, it's not that big of a deal. Like, like sure, okay, this character dies. I want to see how. I want to see how they died. I want I want to see how they die in the story. I want to see the context, how that affects other uh, other characters, what kind of effect it has on the story, and how it's presented, right? Because this this isn't is, Star Rail isn't just a book, right? It's not a book or a, a like a like a like a printed medium, right? Where all you have are words to go by. Um, it's a visual experience as well. Dare we say? We dare we call it a visual novel, or it has visual novel elements. So. You don't get the full experience just from being told, oh yeah, so-and-so character dies, right? Though I do understand, obviously, that that would ruin the experience for a lot of people um, who are more a lot more sensitive to uh, leaks like that. So that's just me speaking from personal experience, but yeah, obviously, you know, I get everything that Tectone's saying. It just doesn't quite apply to me personally, but I'm just one guy, so just wanted to throw my two cents in there. So we'll put them right here because there's pros and cons, right? Now let's talk about 
this. We've moved to a new zone, and that new zone is, what's this? Events, boss leagues. Ah, events, events don't really matter. Bosses, ooh, this one's rough. This is a rough one to tackle. Bosses, I would argue, can be very bad. I think boss leaks can be very bad because it can potentially spoil the story. I do think that that is very bad. Yeah, it depends this on how story relevant the bosses tackle, are. Okay, so we're gonna address this at the end. Boss spoil the ending? Exactly, right? I'd rather not know boss leaks? Absolutely. I think this can be very bad. However, I do think it's fine. Like, for example, uh, if they were to say, you know, we just did the 1.0 quest and Bronya was revealed to be a super villain, and then in 1.1 it says now we fight Bronya, it's like, okay, well, that can be expected. However, if we're doing a quest where it's like, Firefly's our buddy, she's so nice, and then at the end of it, we know, well, then why are we going to fight Firefly as a boss? Hmm, I wonder why, right? So these dun, can be dun, very bad. Dun. Now, I want to go down the list, and Could I want to talk be? about character leaks and how do we tackle these? How why does sam have the same so color scheme as firefly hmm. for both the company and the player so here's what you do we already know this hoyo verse is okay with allowing some creators to showcase characters early right this is a truth they're okay with i Oh, Techno's gonna explain. When to lose this. gaming, they're okay with Fob, they're okay with Braxophone, allowing them to showcase early with the caveat this is beta footage. So, what do you do? What do you. Uh, let me preface this by saying this is. I think my chat brought this up a little bit earlier because I think somebody in, in my in my Twitch chat uh, mentioned to me at the beginning of my stream today that uh, what like what my thoughts were on like the content creator drama. I I, I assume this is the drama that involved. Th this is the drama that Tecton was talking about in his previous video from today uh, regarding uh, I think Brax because he mentioned Brax by name here. So I assume this is about the content creator drama uh before today i actually had not heard of this maybe i should be a little bit more uh aware of what's going on in the in the star rail community from a genshin uh, from like a content creator perspective but um yeah uh first time today i'm, I'm hearing of this but now i have a little bit more context thanks to tectone ex actually explaining at least the base stuff going on here you do here is what you do you allow the public beta to be open to everyone okay this is an option. Open beta. In the open beta client, in the open beta client, you watermark it heavily to where no footage can be posted from that server without that heavily watermarked content of this is not complete. Other games do this, by the way. Open beta with heavily watermarked footage that cannot be photoshopped out. Whether that's lines, the ek marks, the public beta in a gray uh, lightened overlay behind the screen, in the top, in the bottom. That way, any footage that is leaked, that could potentially be leaked, would also be leaked by saying, this footage is not a certain. This is a way to deal with it. To be honest, I do think this is a great way to deal with it. Okay, because I understand, I understand that well yeah well we don't want this person to do this well we don't want that person to do that here's a better idea stop letting dumbasses into your closed beta then this will fix everything if you stop letting i mean i'll explain this more in detail when we talk when i go over all of tectone's ideas one by one or uh, you know break them down one by one and give my own takes on this but just for this one, why even have fucking closed beta, like, public closed beta tests at all? <laughs> it's like, Mihoyo wonders, oh, why or why do we have so many leaks? And they've been having, op like, public closed beta clients since the, uh, since the beginning of frickin' time. Ever since Genshin 3, 3, 3 years ago or so. So, huh, I wonder why. <laughs> Anyways. Dumb asses into your closed beta, then shit will stop being leaked. But the problem is this hey, closed Sebastian, beta, you're going? giving it to the bad guys. You're giving it to the bad guys. Upgrade your security system. That way the leaks stop happening. Rather than it be a open beta, closed beta with more trusted players and still 
heavily watermark the clients. This can be the same thing, closed beta, still free labor, but now it's watermarked and footage literally cannot be leaked without it being said, this is not complete. This is not complete. Here's the final one. Here's the final one. And I think this is a great one. Hire mm -hmm. people to cover your game and stop being cheap. Because if you were to hire a developer testing team and a, a team to test your game, well then the game never makes it to the public and then bada bing, bada boom, your leaks are safe. So we can either let it be open for everybody while it's watermarked, we can do closed beta while still heavily marked, or you can just hire people and say the closed beta. These are the options that you can choose. This solves everything. Now, you saying, oh, well, only this person's allowed to cover this because I like them and they've done the legwork for me. It's just currently not working because everything's being leaked regardless. Everything's being leaked regardless. These issues, will fix literally every issue that you have. Any of these options, any of these options fix every issue. If someone sees an issue with what I'm saying, let me know. But as far as I'm concerned, this fixes everything. I also believe the open and closed beta do not have story content in it that should not be tested and if it is tested it should only be tested by paid people because there has not been a single scenario where you all have changed the story due to beta feedback so just get the story off the beta testing you can test characters you can test the zones there's no reason to have your story on there hopefully that makes sense is there any issue here that people think i haven't covered but for me this solves absolutely everything having story in the beta so Stupid. True. Let Take It Cook because he's going off and giving us a new style of food. True. No, you actually made sense. Cool. Okay, it's about the end of the video. I'm going to assume that that's the, what we watched so far is the core video or the core um, part of the video. And I'm assuming the last, uh, I'm assuming the last minute is just him uh, talking to chat. Uh, what I want to address right now is when uh, right around like maybe like a minute ago when Tectone was talking about how he thinks that all these uh, suggestions he's got will solve everything. Unfortunately, I don't think that's the case because because Star Rail is uh, not just Star Rail, but Genshin too, right? Because the New Age Hoyaverse games are so wildly popular, in my honest opinion, there will always be a chance, no matter what MiHoYo does, of there being leaks anyway, right? Um, all of, most of, uh, I'll go, again, I said I will break down all of uh, Tectone's ideas one by one. Um, but so far, especially the latter half of his suggestions, uh, Tectone's ideas are solid. They're most, mostly ideas that I would also agree with, too, for the most part. Um, but, like, no ma I feel like no matter what Hoyaverse does, um, there's always going to be a, a, a risk of a leak, right? Because people leak shit from, for other companies all the time. Um, like, for example, I remember back when uh, Street Fighter VI was coming out, right? Uh, like the months, or like months leading up to its release, people, like there was somebody who leaked the entire uh, Street Fighter VI uh, starting roster uh, and their DLC, their first DLC uh, characters too, like their Season 1 characters, uh, their Season 1 DLC characters. Um, and yeah, sure, Street Fighter is a very popular title, but like, uh, uh, Street Fighter is also a very popular title, so yeah, people would want to leak that shit uh, too. So like, if that can happen for a game like, you know, Street Fighter, uh, for a different company like Capcom, then and, and it's not like it's not like Capcom is known for putting out you know open beta open betas for people to try other than other than the, their um like their the closed beta their closed multiplayer beta that they had uh, tw uh twice uh, I think uh leading up to their release right back in 2022 2022 yeah 2022 because Stray Fire came out last year in 2023 um yeah the point is that there's always going to be a risk of a leak uh like, specifically the ideas that I agree with Tectone the most are on, I would advocate for MiHoYo uh, 
uh, in order to try getting uh, try clamping down on leaks as much as they can, I would I I would advocate specifically for MiHoYo to get rid of open beta testing altogether. Right? Don't even make um like closed beta testing or open beta testing or whatever kind of beta they do. Uh, don't even let that shit even be uh ac accessible by your average Joe right on the fucking internet altogether. Right, because like no, that like just doing that alone would probably solve half the leak issues. To be honest with you, um, and yeah, they should work more closely, more intimately with a um a dedicated maybe, and you know, call them professional if you want, but like an actual like like game testing team of some kind, right? Or if they don't want to, like uh, they should go out. Mihoy should go out there and like hire or find people, um. Or like make like a like like conduct like a a more secret like more undercover more low key uh, recruitment program where they get players like experienced players not just like your average casual like experienced players to come try their game or something like that and then like agree to work with them as their like their testing team or whatever right make them sign something where it's like yeah uh, we want you to test our game but in exchange like we'll, 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 we'll compensate you but in exchange like don't talk about it don't release any footage about it might as well ma matter of fact uh they should probably shouldn't even um what is they probably shouldn't even let them take any footage at all right ideally they should have people in mainland china uh attend like certain like centers or whatever maybe they could set up like certain testing sites low key where they bring in uh local players where uh, to 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 come test their footage or te to come test their beta beta gameplay um you know for a couple hours a day or something like that i don't know there's a variety of obviously there's a, a lot of ways they could that they could handle that um you know but something like that where it's way more controlled in a way more controlled environment and that would, I would agree, that would eliminate, like, the, va the vast majority of their leak issues or their issues with leaks right then and there. But at the same time, uh, you can never truly be safe, I would argue. Um, there's always a chance that some dumbass is gonna do, is gonna leak shit for clout. Uh, no matter how tightly you think you've um, like put a damper on, or how how tightly you've clamped, you think you've clamped down on like potential leaks happening. So let me just let's just get that out of the way. Um, none of these ideas, even though they are all you know they're all relatively good, none of these ideas will totally hundred percent guarantee uh, the the eradication of all the leaks that Mihoya has had to deal with. So let's just go. Let's just let's just start with that one for now. Anyways, uh, let me go down the list here that Tectone's got for like his ideas on how to solve leaks. So I agree when he when he starts with from the company's perspective, from Mihoyo's perspe perspective. Obviously, leaks are fucking terrible. Yeah, um, because leaks el eliminate the hype, the hype factor. Um, sometimes they can be good. Like I brought up Street Fighter's leaks, uh, just earlier in this video, right? Um, that roster, uh. Had, it was like a double-edged sword. Obviously, the entire uh, start, starting base roster for SF6 and the DLC characters, the season one DLC characters, like that sucked from like a like a like a hype perspective, right? Because you know, oh, we already you know we already know who's going to be in the game, uh, like a year before they even a year before the game even comes out. But at the same time, when people looked at that roster, they realized, oh, wait a minute. Um, all of the original eight world warriors from Street Fighter 2, they're all in it, right? Ryu, Ken, Kami, uh, Ed, Edmund Honda, E Honda, um, Guile, Dalsim, um, I think I'm forgetting somebody, oh, Blanca, I think. Hopefully that was all eight of them. Um, they realized, oh, wait a minute, they're all going to be, um, uh, they're, all the world warriors are going to be in it. That's pretty cool. So people realize, oh, so Capcom's, uh, Capcom wants to give Street Fighter Six a solid base where they put in characters that people will, will recognize. And then we've got some newcomers in, in, in there like Marissa, Manon, um, Lily, right? Jamie, whoever the fuck Jamie was at the time because uh, we didn't really know much about him uh, before we got the initial first trailers, uh, gameplay trailers for, for Street Fighter Six. So it's a double-edged sword. But in general, if companies can help it, right, obviously they don't want any leaks out there, right? Because, again, it kills the hype. And not only that, but uh, in the Hoyver, in the Star Rail dev stream that we had last week or so, um, 
I think who who was talking about it, Xiaoji, the the writer dude. Um, he put it pretty well. Where like, yeah, like leaks kind of ruin all the effort that the staff, you know, the Hoyaverse people, the 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 devs, the employees put into creating like a ton of hype for their for their content. Right? It sucks when you know you put in you you pour your heart and soul into your 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 you know in star in Hoi versus case uh all, all your all the exciting star rail content or genshin content for that matter just to have it ruined by some dipshit who got into your closed beta testing right and decided to just leak everything on twitter for clout yeah that, that shit sucks i i get it um so yeah understandably from the company's perspective in this case mihoyo yeah like no matter what leaks are bad um, again, the caveat here is w what I mentioned with Street Fighter, the Street Fighter leaks, where sometimes, depending on what gets leaked, uh, it can also be sort of a good thing too, because it may uh, it may still maintain or preserve some amount of hype anyway, right? But you, obviously, that's that's like that's RNG. You don't know you don't know how you, know, you ultimately you don't know how like leaks will will influence or affect. Uh, your players at the end of the day and so you might as well not even from if you're if you're the company or the developers you don't want to take that risk so just no no a flat no on all leaks if you can help it so i agree with the uh, tech tone on that so going to the player the player from the player's perspective uh character leaks kit good yes absolutely mm -hmm. and yeah tech tone gets it um how uh character leaks allow players to prepare and save resources like everything he talked about everything he mentioned when he was talking about the character leaks part they're all on point they're all accurate he he, he knows the stuff there because yeah it allows players to prepare and obviously you know gotcha companies don't want you to do that um at least you know not normally unless you're like something unless you unless you manage like a gotcha company a gotcha game where like fgo or arc knights or blue archive for example where um like you have different servers that have staggered content right maybe the home servers for uh, the, the primary service for those games are like chinese or japanese or whatever and so they're like a year like six months a year two years ahead of content then there's not really much you can do about that um but in genshin's and sorrel's case because obviously all those servers are concurrent um yeah obviously mihoyo if they can help it don't want you to know about characters beforehand but for the players it's absolutely vital because it's in tandem it's this is in tandem with uh star rails and genshin's whole like gotcha system where you can guarantee a character for yourself right um if you either get if you get like for example if you get spooked by an off rate up uh going for one character that means that oh that means that my next five star is guaranteed to be somebody i the next the next five star character i roll on so that means that uh, i now have the option to save for another character in the future that might be really good and when if one does come up then oh guess what the next time i roll a five star it's going to be them guaranteed so yeah character leaks obviously good i think that in my personal opinion is that the character leaks the character leaks should stay they should stay because that that gives players the ability to plan and that's the strongest ability that players can have for any gacha game especially the free to plays cuz yeah like tectone said said it'll save them lots of money and honestly um I don't see why Mihoyo should. I think I even talked about this earlier on stream before even we even got to reacting to videos today, right? How um, uh, what is it? Uh, how character leaks like Mihoyo should take advantage of character leaks instead of trying to suppress them because we all know that both for both Star Rail and Genshin, right? When one patch client starts, right? For example, uh, for Star we're, Star Rail, we're currently on 2.0. Like that means that the 2.1 beta is going on right now, or at least it should be. Uh, I don't know exactly how those betas work, but I assume those uh, the neck the betas for the next client uh, lasts until they are launched, or maybe they close the betas like a week beforehand or or something. I don't know. Either way, um. My, the thing I talked about earlier on stream was that Mihoyo should, instead of, again, instead of um, trying to uh, trying to get rid of the leaks, they should, at this point, like, they should let them, like, they should let them rock. Because what they can do is they can take the time, during the time that those leaks are, like, starting to circulate around the internet, right, around Twitter or Discord or whatever, um, they should see how people perceive their characters, right? 
Because we, for especially for Genshin, we all know about how, oh yeah, uh, we knew that Dehya wasn't really going to be that great a five-star character, and when she came out, sure enough, eh, she wasn't that great. Uh, me personally, I have a different opinion on that, but for the sake of, uh, for, for this argument's sake, yeah, we, we kind of knew, Genshin players kind of already knew Dehya wasn't all that. So... What Mihoyo should have done was they should have tweaked Dehya during the time that her leaks were going around. So that way, when Dehya does come out, people are and people roll for her and they try her out on the live servers, they're pleasantly surprised. And they're like, oh shit, Dehya's not how she was in the closed beta. As a matter of fact, she's even better. And so that generates a sort of like Secondhand wave of hype. I don't know what I don't know what you would call that, but it, it, it it's it's a pleasant. So people like to be like to be pleasantly surprised, you know, rather than disappointed. Obviously, if we have if we could have a choice, um, and so you can you can still end up convincing people to roll for characters that they perceive to be bad if you take advantage of those leaks and use it to your advantage, and use a time that. Uh, you have before like a like a future character actually comes out on the live server if they're considered to be bad by the by the player base to make them good to tweak them before they came out i mean they did this with ganyu back in the day didn't they because i was told that back when ganyu first came out back in 2020 and for, for genshin that is obviously um initially people were memeing G ganyu as oh five or, or, or just oh five star cryo amber or some shit like that and then when she came out, lo and behold, she's not just five star cryo amber. She's a freaking cryo nuke with her uh, with her charge attack. And I was told that Mihoyo apparently cranked up her cranked up her numbers hilariously high, much higher than they were people were expecting. Players were expecting uh, for her for them to be but by the time she hit live servers. So that's what they should do on like a regular basis. Use leaks as like a barometer to see how well people are taking their characters. Because like players aren't stupid. At least the people who do the testing on on like uh, on characters in both Genshin and uh, in Genshin both Genshin and Star Rail, they're not stupid, right? Sometimes they can get some stuff wrong, and I'll hold them. I'll forever hold those against. Uh, I'll forever hold those against the player bases whenever that happens. <clears throat> but uh. Yeah, the point is, is that Mihoyo should use those leaks uh, to their advantage and tweak characters appropriately or accordingly um, if the players think they're bad. And so that way, what do they have to lose, right? The more good characters we have, or at least, you know, as long as they don't make any character, like, uh, like very obviously bad, then... You know, there's there's nothing there's nothing really to lose there. I think the only exception to this was is maybe if, um, for example, like everybody everybody was like, oh, uh, Jing Yuan's bad. Bef this was before Sparkle came out, by the way. Um, oh, Jing Yuan's bad. Oh, Mid Yuan, like why would you get why would you roll for him? He sucks dick. He, oh my god, he's so bad. And then Sparkle comes out, and all of a sudden he's top tier. Right, that would be like the one exception, but obviously we can't. We don't. We don't have that sort of clairvoyance, right? This is this is an FGO where we have two years worth of clairvoyance, so we know what the meta looks like two years ahead of time. Um, but like barring situations like that, um, yeah, like what's stopping Mihoyo from taking advantage of those leaks on their own, especially if they don't. They, they if, especially if they're dead set on not like changing the way they have they, they host closed betas right if they continue to do it to do what they're doing now where they just they just let anybody into their open betas that they're their closed beta testing or whatever for the next client patch um and any 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 idiot with a twitter twitter account can just go in and record some footage and throw it up on their twitter account and be like hey look guys leaks right if they continue to insist on doing that then they might as well take advantage of their own leaks so, I would go that far, matter of fact. I would take um, what Tectone suggested here, where, oh yeah, character leaks are good, and I would take that a step further, or two, three steps further, and just straight up suggest, oh yeah, Mihoi should just take, care of, take advantage of their own leaks too. <laughs> their players always do it, why not they? <laughs> right, what, what, what's, the, what's the problem here? They might as well do it too, if their entire player base is doing it. Fuck it. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I would go that far. It'll be hilarious to see Mihoyo doing that too. Just uh, just 
Just my take on that. In any case, uh, I think there was... Was there anything else I wanted to mention about the character leaks part? Oh, I didn't want to start the video. Um, I think I wanted to mention something, but I forgot about it. I think uh, what I talked about so far about how Mihoyo should take advantage of their own leaks should, should have probably already covered that too anyway, so... But, yeah, minus the whole Mihoyo, like, using their own leaks part. Um, yeah, like, character leaks are obviously very good because they give free players, especially, even whale players, too, for that matter. Um, like, they, they allow them to schedule ahead, plan ahead, right? Future planning is everything with gacha games. And so, and, and in the long run, it'll definitely help you save uh, money and, like, make sure you roll for characters that, characters that you know will, will are worth the investment, right? Because a lot of players obviously obviously have like gotcha player remorse by them because they roll for characters that you know they ended up not really liking or end up not really using anyway. That happens a lot in you know other gotcha games and with something like Star Rail where every character counts, right? This isn't like I don't know Azure Lane where the game literally throws you new characters like every other day. Um, in Star Rail, it's not like that because you don't have as many characters. So like, which characters you roll for is much more important. Both in Star Wars and in Genshin at this point. Uh, Genshin too. Even though Genshin is obviously much older. So, Let's see. Uh, next up, story, le story leaks. Yeah, I agree. Story leaks are uh, bad. I mentioned earlier that me personally, I don't mind being uh, leaked on... Uh, uh, being spoiled on story, but obviously I'm only one guy. I understand that most people don't want to get spoiled uh, when it comes to story, especially if they're actually invested in it, which... Unfortunately, I'm not. So I, that kind of contributes to my contributes to my whole, you know, reason why I'm, I don't really care for uh, story leaks, especially not with Star Rail. But uh, yeah, ideally, you don't want story leaks. Like nobody wants this shit. It, it sucks, right? People always bitch about how you know, oh, if there's like a popular anime or a uh, TV show going around. Like I remember back in the day during the 2010s when uh, the Game of Thrones was running. Right? People would be like, oh my god, don't spoil uh, Game of Thrones shit. And like I would tell, I would tell people back then, like, hey, if you don't want to get spoiled on something about on like a popular show or whatever, like stay the fuck off the internet until like you've seen the episode yourself, right? Don't even don't even get on Twitter, don't even go online, right? If you don't want to risk any any any, if you don't want to risk anything at all, right, on getting spoiled on shit, just don't just put the phone down, right? Put your phone away. Just go watch the show first and then come back. So, but yeah, obviously that's easier said than done. So, yeah, story leaks, I agree. They're just bad altogether. I don't really, I can't really see, like, a caveat to that. Or, like, I can't really see, like, an exception to that. Yeah. It's just a bad time all around. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, new zones. I think I mentioned my take on uh, Tectone's opinion on, like, uh, like new zone leaks. Again, just to reiterate, um, I understand where he's coming from. Me, personally, I'm not really worried about this too much, because, again, I, I think he, I think even Tecto mentions, mentions it himself, where, like, you still want to be there, right? You still want to run around in the area yourself and experience it for yourself firsthand. Um, and that's what I prefer doing. Like, you can show me an area, a new area, and be like, cool, but, you know, I, ideally, I'd, I'd like to actually play that, play that myself. Right, be there and run around uh, with my, one of my characters in there myself on my own PC, or whatever, or my own device or whatever. So, uh, I don't really care for this I either. Um, the new zone part, yeah. So I'm, I would say I'm pretty neutral, but more towards the like I don't get, I don't give a fuck uh, category if that even exists. And again, just for tech tone, I, my, my, I'll bring up my suggestion from earlier. I think one thing that they could do to still keep that hype factor is um is to include like secret bonus zones where like you can like they don't show it on stream during their dev streams but you'll discover it either by doing quests or like just running around in there yourself and be like oh what's this and you you stumble upon like a completely new zone that you didn't expect so uh, again i don't know how they would uh, how mihoyo would be able to pull that off but th again that's up to them uh let's see bosses can be very bad this one, I get where he's coming from. I'm also... I kind of lump, uh, like, boss leaks together with, like, new zone stuff. Because, again, I'm, I'm, I'm of the opinion that, you know, I don't really care about story leaks. Because it's one thing to be spoiled on sto story and then be able to experience it yourself. Right? But, I, obviously, I get where he's coming from with, like, boss leaks being bad. Because, again, 
uh, with the the example he made was pretty good, right? Why you know? Oh, you start with Firefly as your favorite companion, so why the fuck are you playing her? Or why the fuck are you fighting her as like a weekly boss or something? Like, what's going on here? Like, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't take you know a genius to understand that. Oh, wait a minute, Firefly betrays you, or you, or even worse, you betray Firefly or some shit like that. Assuming that's how the story unfolds, so. I understand. Uh, so I would, I would, I would advocate for no boss leaks either, because again, that ties in with the whole uh, no story leaks part. Uh, but personally, I don't really care. Uh, now we get into the juicy part, the 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 quote unquote drama part. I think this was. I think he mentioned Brax for this. For I assume, so I assume this is the drama that Brax phone was, is is involved in, if you can even call it that. So Hoyerverse is okay with allowing some creators to showcase characters early, uh, as in like uh, beta footage. My take on this is this, without, like, trying to, like, shame or, like, trying to, like, talk shit on any of the content creators who are allowed to showcase characters early, um, because I'm pinning this, I'm pinning the blame for this more on MiHoYo themselves, like, I don't know why they, I don't know why MiHoYo thought this was a good idea, right? Like, I, I guess they're trying to interact more with the community, but this is not how you do it. Like, I remember watching Visual Ventures' is, um, like the toxic world of Genshin Impact video. Some of you guys in chat may remember me watching that video live on stream like a month or two ago at this point. But uh, in that video, uh, they talked about uh, they talked about um, how oh yeah, there was this drama about the what is it the the Twitch uh, guild guild something event where you had to gift subs to Twitch streamers on Genshin uh, uh, Genshin streamers on Twitch. Uh, in order to obtain like a, the the KFC wings, basically the KFC glider. Uh, obviously, it was named different for the NA server, but uh, basically the KFC wing glider. And like, I'm just thinking to myself, like, did they learn nothing from that? Clearly, they didn't, because I, even I explained in my React video to that to that video, the Toxic World of Genshin video, that um, Mihoyo most likely didn't organize that sort of thing themselves themselves, or at least not the core like Dawe and other higher higher ups. They probably outsourced that sort of thing to like a third third a third party agency or whatever, and they organized it because they're more familiar with like the the Western side of like content creation and shit like that. So I assume this is the same shit that going down with uh with this so like i'm not surprised at all that hoyo versus uh, mihoyo is making the exact same mistake just in a different flavor with whatever this whatever the fuck this is right allowing some creators to uh, some cc's to showcase early beta footage or whatever like ideally this shouldn't even happen at all Right. This is such a terrible idea because, again, this is always like this drama is always going to happen. People are always going to look at this and be like, oh, so only some creators get to do this. Why is there? Why is that? Right. Obviously, this 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 sort of situation implies like a degree of favoritism, obviously. Right. Like favoritism or wh whatever, wherever you want to go with this. So, like, I'm just I'm like, I'm. <laughs> I'm just like, why? why? Why would you do this again? I mean, I know why. I think, at least, I think I know why. But it's just very disappointing for to see that Mihoyo is again making the exact same mistake, um, again, like a second or a third time even. So again, ideally, this shouldn't even happen at all, right? I I would if you if if they're gonna do this, I agree with Tekton where uh at that point you you should just let everyone do it, right? And just let everyone to your open beta. Right, if you're gonna have leaks anyway, you might as well just invite everybody to come play your closed in uh, closed beta, right? What, what the fuck are you? What the fuck do you have to lose out on at, at that point, right? I mean, at that point, that's even better for me, Hoyo, because then you know the more people you have playing your closed beta, the more more information, the more possible bugs, glitches, or whatever that people might be able to uncover, and they might be able to, and, you know, and they might be able to learn that from all these people playing. So yeah. I think if you're gonna if you're gonna have if you're gonna do this the the allowing some creators part then you might as well just have everybody going. Fuck it. At least that way you'll you'll come out with the be hopefully you'll come out with a better like client, uh client version uh by the time it's ready to come out on lives on on live servers. Um, but yeah, preferably. I agree with Tekton here as well. Uh, preferably, just don't make these sorts of betas public to begin with. 
Yeah, I believe I already I've already gone in depth about this uh, earlier before I went up, went back up top. But just to just to hopefully briefly go over, yeah, just don't make these things public at all, right? Mihoyo should not skimp out on this sort of thing and like hire a proper team to do their testing if they're not willing to do it in house on their own, right? Contract another like some some sort of like game testing studio or 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 company or whatever. I'm sure they exist out there somewhere. Uh, I'm sure, yeah, especially in China. Um, like, fucking set up a pipeline to and, to make sure that, you know, you can test shit without risking, without risking people leaking your shit all the time. And yeah, even though I did say that um, no matter what they do, there's always going to be, like, a small chance of a leak anyway, happening anyway. Like, at the very least, that'll be much better than whatever the fuck we have going on right now. So... There you go. <laughs> Ugh. Um, so yeah, most of uh, I mean, I I broadly agree with all of Tectone's ideas here. Like I don't, there's not really one that I disagree with. I don't think no. Um, the mo the most like the most my opinions like deviate from his are like some of the ones where like I like take a step uh, further and pitch my own suggestions on how. Uh, far Mihoyo could go like for example like on the character leaks part I suggest I go a step further and suggest Mihoyo should actually take advantage of their own leaks to make sure that their characters that they're putting out are are as good as they can be uh, but none of Tectone's ideas here are like bad per se so yeah um I'll close with uh with this because obviously this video is talking about like leaks and stuff um I'll close with this because this was something that I also discussed on my own stream uh, some time ago uh, when people, when my own stream chatters brought this up, uh, brought this up to me. Um, I will say that uh, I think I find it, I found it very strange that Mihoyo was trying to like shame the leakers on their own live stream, right? At least I think they were trying to do that because yeah, like Xiaoji and the other employees, the other de the Hoyaverse employees on that dev stream last time for Star Rail, like. They were going on and on about, like, how, oh, leaking is bad and you shouldn't leak and shit like that, right? Like, they were obviously doing that for, like, like to, 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 it, they were doing that as a, as a publicity ploy, right? To garner, the garner sympathy, basically, uh, for them and try to, at the same time, try to prevent people from, like, try to, they're trying, they were trying to guilt trip people into not leaking, right? Because, oh, you're ruining our effort and shit like that. That shit didn't really work on me, man. Because at the end of the day, only Mihoyo can stop uh, their own leaks. Or at least the effort should start with them, right? Them trying to blame their own players for leaking shit, that ain't gonna work, man. Like, yeah, sure, people shouldn't be leaking shit in the first place, but this is the internet. Like, what the fuck did you expect? People are gonna leak shit all the time if they can help it, right? Even the Chinese players. So... It has to start with Mihoyo first. They have to be the ones to make a concerted effort. Even if the players themselves don't follow in their footsteps, um, they have to be the ones to cover up their own shit. Right? So that's why I didn't really like them like trying to trying to guilt trip and like and like sympathy sympathy farm on their on their own dev stream. It kind of, it kind of. Personally, I thought it, that I thought that was in pretty poor taste. Like, why even bring that up in the first place, right? Like, this is supposed to be an anniversary. Like, why are you, why are you talking about like leaks and how like that ruins everyone's like effort and shit like that? Like that, like, bro, like that was kind of weird. Like, if they sh if they wanted to bring that, they should have brought it up in a different in a, in a different time, or like make a separate statement about it. That would that would have been more acceptable. But it was really, I, I found it very weird that they even brought it up during that, during an anniversary stream. I think that, again, I thought that was in pretty poor taste. So, I uh, hope they don't do that again. But something tells me that uh, things might be a little bit different, so. Uh, based on the closed beta, if you've seen, you've been in so far, uh, story content is not tested. You don't know why Techie... Uh, says there is okay. So you've actually done some story or some closed beta testing yourself. Um, 
Well, I assume Tecton hasn't ever been into, uh, hasn't ever done any, like, actual Star Rail or Genshin closed beta testing or open beta testing either. I mean, to be fair, I, I haven't either, so I just kind of take his word for I just kind of, uh, I've kind of taken his word for it. Um, either way, story leaks are bad. I think he's also working with the assumption that, like, yeah, there are some story con- that there is some story content, uh, in, in, in the beta. And, I mean, to be honest with you, I wouldn't be surprised, right? Um... Like, if some of the leaks that Mihoyo's had to deal with re- are regard, like, uh, have been, like, story leaks, then, yeah, obviously, it had to get out there somewhere. Or it had it, some people know about it somehow. So, I would assume the easiest way for a story to be leaked is through beta testing. Um, but if, if what you say is true, well, assuming, you, assuming what you say is true, then I guess we don't have to worry about, like, story getting leaked through, uh, open, like, like, beta testing. I would certainly hope they don't do that. Yeah. Certainly hope they don't. Um, main quest missions and voice lines are disabled. Actually, that I can I, that I can vouch for because every time we get, for example, like every time you look up um, like leaked footage for like new characters in Genshin, yeah, like you never hear any of the voice lines. So you're probably telling the truth on that. Yeah, I'll I'll trust you on that one. It, it, the logic checks out there. Whatever is going on right now had no effect on the company. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, can you elaborate uh, more on that? Like, like, uh, do you mean that all the leaks going on right now don't really have an effect on the company? I mean, yeah. To be fair, it, it doesn't. It, like, it's kind of hard for us to like gauge the amount of effect that uh, like con- like repercussions that like that leaks have on Mihoyo because they're always gonna make money. But like, I don't doubt that these leaks would prevent Mihoyo from making even more money. And I assume that's what they're concerned about, right? Their bottom line. So, uh, they could have just said, "Please don't leak." That's not cool, and stop there. But the fact that they kept talking about it only made it worse to them. I'm of the opinion they shouldn't have even brought it up at all. Um, or yeah, I, I suppose I suppose I can I can I can settle for that. Yeah, them just saying, "Yeah, like please don't leak our shit." You know, end of story. Drop the mic. Yeah. That that would have been that would have been okay. I think I would have been okay with that. But yeah, the, the problem the problem was that they just kept going on and on about it. I was like, ugh. Like I remember watching that part on stream, like live, and I was just like mentally tuning out by like by uh, like like half a minute in. I was like, why are they talking about this? So. story leak as if their story was good i mean people care about panakini so and to be fair panakini is the strongest i felt about any hoyaverse either genshin or star rail story in quite a while i mean fontaine's story was decent i I at least enjoyed that parts of it anyway um but i would say watching firefly die was the most i felt about any hoyaverse story between at least Genshin and Star Rail. Because at the very least, I enjoyed watching Firefly die. That was cool. Uh, I know that sounds extremely psychotic. Uh, but that scene actually made me care. For a split second. And that's more than what I can say about any other uh, Genshin story or Star Rail story leading up to that point. They leaked Aventurine boss in their own stream. I mean, to be fair, that wasn't that bad. Because we knew that Aventurine wasn't, you know, exactly a good guy. You know? Um, so I was like, yeah. Like, that wasn't really that big of a surprise. So. But yeah, like, if they leak, like, a serious, like... For example, if they re- if they resurrect uh, Firefly somehow and she's, a, she's like a boss you have to fight, that would be a different story entirely. But like I think the adventuring boss was, was fine. That that's not like that's not that's not that bad. What's that weird form of this? I don't know. We'll find out in the story. Yeah. Which is which is why like oh yeah, like technically boss leaks are 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 you know are quote bad depending on what angle you're coming at it from 
But like again, like I said earlier, a lot of the spoilers don't really affect me personally because it's not enough just to see oh like oh or just to hear so and so dies or oh here's a boss you have to fight. I want to know how you get there, right? What what is the context? And reading the reading the story will will reveal that to you. So yeah. Me personally, I don't really find like boss leaks to be that big of a deal. Like I remember, um, like I was openly talking about, for example, a Fontaine, uh, elite boss. I think this was for Farina. I think right, either Farina or another Fontaine uh, elite boss that you had to fight to and farm for like essential materials for a certain character. And I remember this one guy in Twitch chat being like, "Oh, why did you talk about that? That's spoilers." I'm like, "Huh? Like how is that spoilers?" Um. Like why 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 do you, well obviously they are spoilers but like why do you care it's just it's just an elite boss but then apparently he felt pretty strongly about me talking about the about that elite boss even though it turned it turned out it, he didn't really that that elite boss didn't really have much of a story presence at all anyway but like people there are people out like like him like that out there who care about that sort of stuff Me personally, I don't. I don't really because it's not enough just to know what a boss is. I gotta know how you got how you get there in the first place. Uh, you miss when uh, roadmaps for a game was a thing. I mean, are the dev streams not roadmaps? To be fair, because like, what do you call those dev dev streams then if they're not roadmaps? Oh, what you meant was the drama, not the leaks. Oh, in Final Fantasy, um, uh, or no, maybe it was something else you mentioned. Oh, yeah, the first thing you said. Uh, but whatever's going on right now had no effect on the company. Oh, uh, the 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 drama. Oh, if you're talking about the content creator drama, then yeah, obviously, I don't. Mihoi doesn't fucking care. Yeah, they they don't. Again, uh, like I said earlier, they most likely Mihoyo most likely contracts like a third party agency to like organize like community uh, run stuff. Like, Mihoyo themselves don't give a shit about, um, like, community engagement or, like, community uh, interaction. They're too big for that. So, yeah. Uh, if you're talking about the content creator drama, then, yeah, obviously I don't give a shit. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Firefly and Robin will do a fusion dance and be the new seven-star character and then reshape Panakini. <laughs> Real and true. <laughs> Careful now, Mihoyo is going to put a DMC on your comment in Twitch chat. <laughs> Fun fact, Horiyama said you can fusion dance uh, two fused characters. I would expect so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like what uh, what Toriyama would would do. But yeah, uh, those are my thoughts on uh, Tecton's video. Overall, big dub. Yeah. Say what you will about Mr. Tecton, but in my opinion, just from like a gotcha game industry or gotcha game knowledge perspective, like Tecton's got got it got it. He's got a pretty solid handle on 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 stuff. I would say, because like there's no, there's not a single like truly bad take here. Like they're all various shades of like you know pretty good or like neutral takes. Uh, at least from my perspective. Like, there's nothing really wrong with this. Yeah. And again, as a matter of fact, there's only a couple things I would actually go even further with myself. So, yeah. Overall, this video was, uh, was, a, was a dub. So, I'm glad I, I'm glad I uh, watched this. And, uh, yeah. I'm actually kind of curious, actually, um, if Tectone would be willing to watch my How to Improve Genshin uh 2024 video. Maybe I can send it over, send it to him over uh, via Discord, uh, and see see if he does. But that video is like a fucking hour long, so I don't know. I don't know if he will. Eh, may as well shoot my shot. See if he's uh down to watch it or whatever. But in any case, uh, thanks so uh, thanks everybody for watching both on stream and over on YouTube. And uh, yeah, uh, go watch uh Tecton's video here. Uh, I'll hopefully I'll remember to put the link for this in the description of this video of my own React video. Um, in case you guys want to watch Techno's video yourself. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.